Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar Look at the weather warnings so we do have a yellow rain warning that is coming into force for Thursday as we are going to see some pretty unsettled conditions quite widely with some heavy rain and some gusty winds towards the coast. We have a look at that in detail on the latest UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as again it is going to be remaining fairly unsettled with perhaps even some cooler conditions coming in for the north on the back side of some of these lows but the longer term or the mid to longer term sort of the next 7 to 14 days things are continuing to look increasingly colder now there is no 100% guarantee that things will turn cold or blocked or anything other than westerly but at this stage the trends are definitely there and quite a few of the models today are again indicating the risk of high pressure moving northwards and colder air coming our way. The GM run today is probably the most cold run I've seen all autumn so far. And it does produce a real direct potent northerly wind. And it does in fact produce widespread snowfall. And we will do something that I do try to restrain from doing, especially at the longer range. Let's have a look at some of those precipitation charts for that GM run. Because although it is highly unlikely it comes off, it's out towards day 10, or at least comes off in that fashion, it is, it is fascinating to be seeing that while we're seeing westerly winds at the moment, as it could be coming up potentially in the next 10 to 14 days. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, which you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see we're kind of in between weather systems at the moment. Just a few showers around across parts of Scotland, up towards northern England here, a few some patchy, drizzly showers, and out towards parts of the Republic of Ireland. If we look out to the southwest, just approaching the southwest of England at the moment, which is our next batch of very heavy rainfall. Now, some people have been saying this is another name, Storm. There was the risk of it being named perhaps a few days ago, but its intensity hasn't really changed all too much uh, in terms of wind gusts and uh, its central low pressure hasn't really changed too much and hasn't actually got too severe so not a name storm but still a lively system with lots of heavy rain i said a weather warning issued we'll have a look at the at, uh, we'll have a look at it in a minute and also generally gusty winds could get up to 50 or 60 miles per hour for coastal areas but this will be moving through dominating most of the night for southwestern areas and then most of the morning further eastwards and actually lingering through all the way till the early afternoon. Now, if you look at the temperatures as of around 8 p.m., you can see it is relatively fresh out there. Nothing amazingly cold, but in between weather systems, that warm front moving in. So it is slightly colder than average at the moment. And that's kind of the recipe for the rest of the week. Generally colder than average, and tomorrow actually does look pretty cold indeed. Because that low is kind of sliding across the south, a lot of that milder air that is fueling the rain doesn't actually really get in and instead we keep this relatively cold air mass on top of us on top of rain and cloud and it'll really hold those temperatures down in places tomorrow as we'll see in a minute now if you look at the latest weather warnings you can see we've got this rain warning issued for tomorrow it's the only weather warning and it's from tonight at midnight until 6 p.m tomorrow again if we look at this 30 to 40 millimeters is possible near the south coast but widely 10 to 20 millimeters and strong winds near 50 miles per hour near coasts maybe even 60 mile per hour in some localized areas high likelihood lower end of the impact matrix and you can see here the warning zone again covering south wales much of southwest england and all of sort of the far south into south east now if you look at the latest ukv we'll be able to see the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days you can see overnight tonight that rain moving in really only dominating in that yellow warning zone not really getting much further northwards than the m4 line really across much of england but dominating through much of the morning and lingering into the early afternoon before clearing away we do see some more rainfall moving from the west during the afternoon affecting further northwards but also southwards as well kind of another back edge weather front moving through towards the evening and then we're into another showery regime into friday kind of in between weather systems into friday afternoons we're getting slightly drier there but then another batch of rain moving in and some very heavy rain in places and transitioning further northwards there overnight into saturday luckily most of that rain falling in the overnight hours but as it clears into saturday afternoon hefty showers remain in the north and into sunday again more showers around so nothing too severe but would be heavy if you do get caught in those and that just continues into monday as well but look the wind direction 
is shifting further northwards, uh, or shifting to the, to the north, and that basically means the air masses are likely to be colder than average, and you can see that here, milder than average, as that weather system is in on Friday into Saturday, and then veering colder than average once again as we head into Monday. Now, if you look at those max temperatures, you can see the into tomorrow afternoon is going to be cold, especially in the south under that rain, 4 to 8 degrees at best, so really quite a chilly day to tomorrow. Again, combination of a generally slightly below average air mass and the rain and cloud. As we head into Friday, frost perhaps in the northeast, but into the afternoon, temperatures will rise further southwards, maybe 8 to 11 degrees, so slightly milder there. It's a Saturday, again could be chilly overnight, but actually those temperatures are rising through the night as that very mild air mass moves in. And we can actually see temperatures up to 15 or even 16 degrees by Saturday afternoon. Again, very temporary, only lasting a day or so before getting swept away. Into Sunday again, temperatures falling slightly, 11 to 12 degrees as the mild air gets pushed away. And we'd expect it to be cooler once again into Monday with temperatures back down to maybe 8 to 11 degrees. So quite up and down with those temperatures, but plenty of cooler weather, especially tomorrow, but equally some mild weather like on Saturday. Some dry days, but mostly we're going to have either areas of persistent rain around or generally showery activity. But as I said, things could change in the longer term and it could be turning much colder. Now, if you look at the latest GFS and see what that is showing over the course of the next couple of weeks, again, you can see the westerly flow dominating over the next few days as we head into early next week. Now this is where things start to get interesting. High pressure builds in and this is where the models kind of start to disagree with each other. This is where all models have high pressure building in, slightly milder air mass coming around that higher pressure and turning us generally probably frosty and foggy under a bit of an inversion under the high. Now, the GFS here takes that high pressure up towards Greenland and attempts to bring a very cold northerly wind in. But if we do look at this, that block is slightly further westwards than what we'd need for a direct northerly. And what that means is all the cold air either goes into Scandinavia underneath the core of these low pressure systems or out towards Iceland and the North Atlantic and actually fuels this low just to the south of Greenland. That spins up and actually gives us very unsettled conditions and cooler northerly winds in the longer term but not a direct northerly like we will see from the GM in a minute. So very similar, very similar blocking positions, but slightly different exact orientations to the rose ridges means that it does go cooler temporarily, then actually goes pretty mild under a very deep area of low pressure, and then we see another cold northerly wind towards the extended range here. Again, the minus five line getting in, turning pretty chilly, frosty and foggy. But if we do look over to the northern hemisphere, you can see there is quite a blocked outlook. So from this sort of pattern, I would expect there to be perhaps repeated bouts of cooler outbreaks or colder outbreaks as we head into early December, if this pattern did come off. So yeah, GFS does get a very cold pattern developing, but unfortunately, doesn't quite bring the very cold air towards the UK. Remember, on the grand scheme, we are quite a small area, so all that cold air does rush somewhere else, but it is a generally cold pattern for northern and western Europe, a uh, blocked pattern there, and it does show signs that it continues into early December. So even though, yes, wouldn't produce anything directly very cold, or at least not very cold for more than a couple of days, it does show more potential into the longer term. Now, the GEM, as I said, is the most interesting run today. It does show something that is very unlikely to verify, but if it did, it would be exceptionally cold. Pretty much the coldest conditions that were possible towards the end of November. Now, you can see westerly winds continue over the coming days, and then we get to the point where all models agree, high pressure reaching over the top of us, a bit more of an easterly flow to this high pressure, and then eventually it tilts up towards Greenland, like the GFS did, but interesting look, uh, interestingly look, the high pressure is more centred towards Greenland, towards Iceland, and it's just, you know, a few hundred miles further eastwards than the GFS, and what this does is it keeps that low that does develop towards Iceland on the GFS much further southwards, and allows a full-on northerly wind to arrive, it goes bitterly cold, and it, the air is coming directly from the Arctic. Now, this sort of system if you did this in late December through to sort of early February, we would be looking at getting chucked into the absolute freezer with the minus 10 isoform moving in, maybe even the minus 15 isoform. But being the end of November, it is like unlikely to be that cold, but it would be 
very cold for the end of November. If we have a look at the upper air temperatures, the minus 5 isotherm comes in for all, and the minus 10 isotherm starts to head our way. Temperature deviation, you're looking at around 6 to 8 degrees below average widely, maybe 10 to 12 degrees below average, arriving further northwards. Again, dew points would be absolutely freezing, widely below freezing dew points there, and the daytime temperatures at midday on the 25th of November, hardly getting above 1 or 2 degrees for inland areas over higher ground, well below freezing. So it would be bitterly cold from this latest GEM run, uh, and it does come on all of a sudden uh, as that cold front sweeps through in the last 24 or 48 hours of this run. And as I said, we will do something that we don't tend to do, uh, simply because it is very speculative. But this is the latest precipitation chart from the GEM run here. So you see the high pressure over the top of us. It does move away to our west. And this is where the GFS halted that high pressure progression and starts to bring more of a westerly low pressure base in. Here, it comes more from the north. And you can see a cold front sweeping southwards here, but of a polar front sweeping southwards during early Friday and then snow showers packing in behind, and we see widespread snow as we head into Saturday. Snowfall up and down the country, even areas into southern England. Again, towards coastal areas, right towards sort of northern France, perhaps still slightly too mild for widespread snow. But elsewhere, inland, yes, anything falling out of the sky in this sort of pattern would be falling as snow, as it is bitterly cold. And you look at those upper air temperatures, widely below freezing. The uh, the thickness levels here down to 520 and generally you need sort of 528 to be seeing snowfall and the temperatures as I said are widely towards freezing at this stage as well so a really extreme GM run unlikely to come off in that sort of pattern but just shows you what the potential is if we see a proper green and high developing and a full-blown northerly wind now if you compare to the ECMWF and unfortunately it is similar to the GFS, but even more pessimistic in terms of that high pressure ridging. It built that high pressure ridging much further westwards, a proper west-based negative NAO, i.e. the blocking is not towards the eastern side of the North Atlantic, it's towards the western side, more towards northern Canada. And what that does is turn us very unsettled. Now, if we do progress through this eastern WF run, you can see it goes westerly over the coming days, continues westerly, sorry, high pressure ridges in, actually probably colder than the other runs towards early next week with a bit of a northeasterly tilt to this, and then this is the position where you think that high pressure is going to head towards Greenland, but instead it's towards northern Canada, you can see it just off the screen, we'll have a look at the northern hemisphere view in a minute and what that does it creates a bit of a disconnect between the ridge in the north atlantic and the ridge up towards uh canada and it kind of just allows the low pressure to plow through and we do go into a, a cool northwesterly wind there is cold air within it you can see we are below average by this point in the blues but it is nowhere near as cold as it could be as if that ridge really got going. Now, if we have a look at the Northern Hemisphere view, you can see if we run back, you can see where that ridge is towards Northern Canada, straight um, straight up towards the Northern Greenland as well. So it isn't too far away from where the GEM had it or even the GFS had it, but it is far enough away that it disconnects from the North Atlantic ridge and basically allows a westerly wind to plow through. A typical negative NAO where all the sort of grand scheme patterns, all the overall sort of northern hemisphere atmospheric patterns would suggest cold weather, but at the surface it doesn't quite come off because that blocking is on the other side of, uh, of green in there. So it would be cold, it would be generally fresh, but it would actually probably be pretty unsettled with lots of rain uh, and northwesterly winds moving in here. So you can see sort of the three scenarios blocking around, so we are correct. And that signal is continuing of blocking in the northern hemisphere up towards the North Atlantic. We can see three different scenarios uh, where the, that high pressure block is slightly shifted, creating massive differences at the surface. Now, the ensembles are continuing to toy with the possibility of very cold weather. You can see over the next week to 10 days, up to sort of the 23rd to 25th of November, fairly stationary from the ensembles. They're fairly confident. They follow a pretty similar track. And you can see where they've got this little spike in warmth around the 23rd to 25th and a lowering in precipitation. That's when that high pressure initially builds in over the top of us. And then where does it go? You see the operational GFS is actually in kind of disagreement with a lot of the other ensemble members, bringing a bit more warmth in. That's because it delays that northerly wind, eventually 
getting colder area in the longer term because quite a few ensemble members here getting that mean well below average with many down towards, down towards the minus five or lower marks would be very cold there. The two meter temperatures are looking a lot colder in the longer range. You can see the control run there, probably similar to the GM with the uh, temperatures in the day down towards freezing. The dew points getting very cold in the longer term, even the average here trending towards zero. So definitely suggesting there is a real risk, whatever sort of the overall pattern is of wintry precipitation in places. Um, and the sea level pressure, you can see rising there towards the 23rd. That's when the high pressure built in and then lowering as we see either wet or either low pressure coming from the west, northwest or the north. Now, if we do have a look at the GM ensembles, we don't normally have a look at this because there's not too many ensemble members. It's not too much different from the other runs. You know, I'd much rather look at the GFS and the East and the WF. We've got a lot more ensemble members, and those give a better outlook. You can see, though, the GM run is kind of right at the bottom of the ensemble range. There definitely are more cold runs than milder runs. Lots below average, but none quite as cold as that GM run. And you look at the team's temperatures, it is freezing cold there by around the 25th to 26th of November. And if you finally compare to the East and the F ensemble members, nowhere near as bullish as the GFS ensembles with cold weather in the longer term. There definitely is a trend to bring colder air in around the 25th, 26th. But after that, we're pretty much bang on average with some keeping it very cold down towards the minus five line, others bringing it back milder. So GFS definitely trending and continue to trend on a coldwoods trend uh, on a coldwoods mark. But the East and the F ensemble members, yes, still looking chilly in the longer term but still toying with the possibility that northerly wind doesn't quite arrive. So we just have to keep a very close eye on it over the next couple of days. Still about a week or ten, week week away from that high pressure building in. And at that point, we'll be pretty sure what the overall pattern will be. So probably at least another two or three days of uncertainty. But I do think by the weekend, the start of next working week, we will have a much better idea what the end of November will have in store. Whether we do see very cold weather arriving, whether we see generally chilly weather arriving with unsettled conditions, or whether it completely reverses and we see com something completely different. I would probably steer to walk towards the more unsettled, colder pattern. Just historically, that is how things have played out. Um, definitely bring the risk of snow in the north, but the bitterly cold GM sort of pattern we're seeing today, I do think is probably pretty unlikely. Just historically looking at these models, very rarely do we see that sort of pattern come off. Again, the last proper situation we saw that come off like that perhaps was last December where it did go very cold. We did see very little snowfall in places. And then probably, you know, Beast from the East is another one that comes to mind where there were some ridiculously cold runs and it actually did come off. But we do see regular, very cold runs, but very rarely it comes off exactly like that. But we will have to see. You can't disregard them at this stage as we have seen multiple cold runs, just not quite as cold as that GM today. But we'll keep a very close eye on it and see. Uh, I'll bring out an update tomorrow to see what it is showing. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.